what is up everybody welcome back to the channel thrift here today we are going to be talking about some of the equations and mechanics behind some of your equipment that is going to really amplify your builds uh the the mathematics are pretty interesting as i was coming up with this with this video a concept i actually learned a lot diving into how exactly all of these uh these modifiers calculate for your equipment so first things first how is attack calculated in this game so if i were to reset my build here we are completely clean we have 32 attack power uh, so if i were to search for attack gear and I were to um, look for anything that provides attack, it's going to improve off of this base modifier. For example, this one right here, um, it is 12% uh, attack. 12% uh, of 32 is about uh, is going to be about three to three and a half. It may be rounding up, so that's how we're getting to 36. Um, you can further improve that by adding in like this injuring. Since this is improving per uh, per level, it's level 19, so we're getting 19% attack to our level. And this is how you're getting this modifier. It's simply just going off of that 32. And this is how we're getting those additional modifiers. 1.12 for the first string. And then any additional gear, it's not multiplicative. So for this other injuring, it'd be 32 times 1.19 for this. So you'd be getting these differences. So if you really wanted to calculate this out, uh, you'd go 32 times 0.19, 6.08 attack is what that injuring is giving off of the 19%. So uh, this is how this is calculated. Now, one thing that a lot of people ask is, well, hey, I can add passives. Yes, you can absolutely add passives. Now, how these passives work for both attack and health, these increase your attack, and once again, it's modified off of the base modifier of 32 in this case, right? So 32 is my base attack. If I were to invest in this 50%, it's going to be 32 times 1.5. So it's gonna make it 48 attack. So if we invest in that, remove the rings, you can see our attack is at 48 now. So the thing about this is if we were to then, you know, if we were to add in the injuring, the injuring gave us 6.08, right? Uh, 32 times 0 0.019 for the 19%. So once again, this should go to 54 if we add that injuring in, which is the case. So, um, you know, flat attack items are based off of the flat attack of your character. In this character's case, it's 32. So just keep that in mind that attack is affecting the base amount of attack, and so is your passives. Like in the case of this 50%, if we were to add 20%, this is going to be 20% of that 32 base attack. Now there is one, or I should say two unique things about this. On some of these gear, it has the start of fight bonuses. In this case, start of fight plus 20% attack. Uh, there's other rings like the level 15 ring that is applying, oh, where did it go? Uh, where is it? I'm blind. Oh, here, another one, ORAC ring. Start of fight plus 10% attack. And then finally the big ring, uh, 15 card deck ring, start of fight plus 30% attack. These equipment that have these start of fight bonuses, this is like a final uh, mo final modifier. So if we go into the fight, we're at 54 attack. That 20, the 20% 20 bonus that we get from the injuring, it is going to be modified off of that 54 stat damage. So when you are looking into building your gear, in terms of attack and some health gear, you do want to have these start of fight modifiers since they are final damage effectively. Of course, you want to have a good modifier before going into the fight, but this is going to give you the largest modifier since it's factoring in all of the bonuses you receive before you start a fight, and then it is modifying it. So it's not off of that 32%. And to show that, let's go ahead and go into a fight. We're gonna receive 20% attack. So if we're to start this fight, 50 to 54 and we're going to get we're going to get to 20% uh, uh, of that which turned it to 65. So if we were to go back to our calculator 54 times 1.2 64.8 and it's rounding up which is how we get to 65. So it gave us an 11 attack boost. So rings that give you start of fight or start of turn bonuses those are final damage modifiers. It's going to modify everything. One thing uh, to mention here there is one piece of equipment, the tongue armband. This tongue armband actually modifies 
the attack before you start the fight. Uh, it, any modifiers at the start of the fight don't affect it. So let's go do this for an example. I'm at 60 to attack. So this armband gives me 10% attack to my hero every time I attack. If I were to start this fight, obviously my attack, it, my power is going to modify above 62, um, but I'm only going to be receiving six power or six attack per strike with that tongue armband. It's not going to be giving me 9.9 .9 or 10 in this case, since I'm at 99 attack right now. So I'll go strike into this enemy. And I received six attack, not nine, because it's using that before attack modifier. So something else to keep in mind when you are looking into gear, that tongue armband is going to be giving you some attack over the course of a fight, of course, quite a bit as you continue to attack, but it's based on that before attack modifier. So you should keep this in mind when you are building your attack builds. If you want to use the tongue armband, it may benefit you to go equipment that gives you more attack before the start of the fight so that this tongue armband is modified even more during the fight. Things you should keep in mind. Let's go ahead and look at a spell build now. So with spell builds, it's a very similar process. You have a uh, gear that will give you elemental power uh, for a specific element. For example, I do have quite a bit of air rings leveled up. So I have this ring right here. This is giving me 10% damage to my air spells. You can see that this is modifying the power already. Uh, for example, this ring is 15. And when I add this 10%, it's making it 17. And if I were to continue to modify this, it's going to push this even more to make that even stronger. There are some rings like uh, the cyclone ring here that says at the start of my turn, 10% air damage for the turn per ventilated opponent. So if I did have a ventilated opponent and then I went ahead and used uh, and then I went ahead to use uh, any skill. This is going to work just like those rings at the start of the fight. Uh, this damage is going to be modified even further. It's not gonna begin off of its base 15 damage. It's actually going to be modified off of its 21 damage. Uh, so that's something to also remember uh, with spell builds. These start of turn rings are really beneficial because this is going to modify all of your spell power even further on your build. Once again, just like our attack power, how it started at 32, all of these modifications made, they're being based off of the original level. So if I were to go and level up one of these skills, uh, this one's 12 and then it's going to 13 and then 14, uh, all spell damage is being modified off of the level one of that skill. So in this case, 12 is what your modif your base modifier would be. Um, in this case, it would be 15 for this skill. So regardless of what level it gets to, you're always starting at that base level. Nothing else is gonna be modified. Okay, so we're at 21 damage. I'm gonna go ahead and apply ventilated and pass turn. Now this 21, 10% uh, should make this a 23 attack spell once we start this fight because it's using the modifier once we got into the fight rather than the base modifier. And as you can see, it turned to 23 because of that 10% we got from ventilated. And lastly, I want to show you push and collision builds. So let me just go ahead and put a uh, push armband on so we can look at this now. We have here a weapon that we can push an enemy and it's showing here that it's going to be doing a total of four collision damage per cell left to cover. Now, how you improve this, there are collision rings and collision gear, just in general. There are rings that will give you um, some bonuses for collision and then they can increase the collision damage but there's another way you can actually increase collision damage and its spell power. So in this case, you have 20% damage to air spells. However, this, if it'll show here, it's going to improve the collision damage. It did, uh, it improved that four collision damage plus 20% because we have air damage to make it five. So a unique thing about collision damage, it is not element specific. So you do not need to have any sort of element. You can put whatever rings give you the most elemental damage or just spell damage in general. It's going to modify that push even stronger. So some of the best rings you can actually put into your gear for this are the hybrid rings. These hybrid rings, they give you 1% damage to two spell types every level. So for example, I actually have a leveled up one. This one, level 10. This is giving me 20% spell damage, the same as this level 20 ring, but it's only level 10. 
So uh, you're doubling the effect. And once again, if we were to look at the push, push armband, this made my damage go to six. So these hybrid rings are actually very useful for push builds for that reason. Uh, not only do they get double the stats, they also can upgrade 20% damage of two types of spells. That's another 40% spell damage that's modifying that base stat of four collision damage. Now, where collision damage comes into play with this, uh, with this, uh, with this equation is actually after all of your spell damage is quantified. So in this case, we are at six current collision damage. If we were to invest on this ring, or actually, let me show the bracer. The bracer can give 50% 50, 50 of your collision damage. So if we were to uh, create collision, the collision cell is six, you would actually multiply, multiply that by your total collision damage. In this case, if we upgraded this, this would go from six damage to nine damage since we are improving it by 50%. So for collision, it does all spell damage modifiers first, and then it mo and then it modifies with the collision damage you have on your character. So in some builds, if you are focusing on push, if you focus a good amount of spell damage using these hybrid rings and then the collision rings to get as much collision damage as that secondary multiplier, you can get to some really powerful collision combinations. I've seen builds out there that were doing over 50 collision damage per cell which um, is pretty crazy to think about, especially when you have armbands like the artichoke armband, that when you attack, you put a shove reflection in your hand, uh, and this is a free push of one cell. You could be doing quite a bit of damage with push uh, if you do have enough spell damage and collision. One final thing I do want to mention is the auras. A lot of classes have these aura types. In this case, the G-Can, they have owl auras and they correspond to the element um, that you do apply. So in this case, if I were to apply oil to an enemy, I would earn an owl, a uh, flame owl aura. This also works with the blunderbust. When you apply an elemental state, you earn a, a dart of that aura type. And then you also have the IOPS, the Kasai IOPS, same thing when you apply an elemental state, you earn an aura of that type. Those auras will scale off of their specific elemental damage type. Of course, you can get, you can modify it further by just getting elemental spell damage that isn't specific to a type. So the trifling ring, if you can apply astral, this is a start of turn modifier, but it's gonna modify all elements. But really what I wanted to show you in some of these builds or some classes, you may have damage that can be applied that doesn't have an element. It's similar to how push works where it's not necessarily an element. For the case of Gcan, you have this ability here that says when you consume a state, it does 21 damage. This doesn't have an elemental type. And you can see here, it says the damage is based on your elemental magics. So this damage here is going to modify very similar to collision where any any elemental damage is going to affect this this ability right here there's most likely some builds out there that could get really wacky where you might be able to just play where you might be able to just play uh, a bunch of those hybrid rings ignore doing a bunch of damage with one or two element types but with all of these hybrid rings leveled up if these were say all level 20 you would be getting 40 percent per ring so that would put you at 160. And then if you further improved the 20% uh, damage on each of them, that would be another 160. You would have a 320% elemental magic build. Um, in my opinion, you could have a really fun build with just this. Uh, if you were to look, um, you know, this is going to be modified further if I had these leveled up. So you could get into some really fun builds. This works the same with Xandazer, since uh, when you combo, you get a powerful dart that powerful dart does not have an element type so it would modify the exact same way where spell damage is actually going to modify it and it doesn't matter what type so you could do the same thing with xandazir zo craw builds where you could run like one hybrid ring just to get a lot of spell power it's going to modify the damage of that powerful dart quite a bit and that's going to be it for the video quite a bit of information there if you do have any questions about equipment please go ahead and leave a comment down below. I'd be more than happy to answer any confusion you have. Uh, I would love to help each and every one of you. Thank you once again for all of the continued support, and I will see you all in the next video real soon.